Alperin Shangun versus Nikola Jokic. Let's talk about it. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Welcome to another episode of Summit State of Mind brought to you by the Apollo Podcast Network. In this episode, we are going to discuss Alperin Shangun versus Nikola Jokic, Rockets versus Nuggets review, Uncle Jeff Green closes the game over Jabari Smith again, and our Dog of the Week, aka MVP of the Week. GM, let's get right into it right now. The Houston Rockets defeated the defending champs, the Denver Nuggets, 107 to 104. Are we back? Oh, <laughs> first of all, yeet, yeet. this team is so fucking back. Your Houston Rockets knocked down the defending, reigning, defending NBA champions, the Denver Nuggets. It's yeah. a beautiful I, sight I, Beautiful stuff. The voice was beautiful. I didn't expect that. You're welcome. 107 to 104, the Houston Rockets extend the win streak to six on the heels of of Fred Van Vliet, mm-hmm. Jeff Green, Alperin Shangun. Let's talk about that right now. So let's go into the matchup first and foremost. Mm-hmm. Alperin Shangun versus Nikola Jokic. Look, we knew right out of the gate what this was going to be. Nikola Jokic is the defending finals MVP. He's the best center in the NBA. Like at least, I, I, I always believed he was better than you know Joel Embiid all around. That's like he's the guy. Yeah. And then overall, we knew what he kind of brought to the table. He's the human triple double machine. Um, he's a proven winner and one of the best players on the planet currently. So Operation Shangun did have his hands full. So Operation Shangun's stat line, we'll give it right quick. 35 minutes, 23 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists as compared to a Nikola Jokic stat line of 36 points, 21 rebounds, and 11 assists. And on paper, GM, I do want to talk about this right away. Mm-hmm. On paper... Yes, Nikola Jokic absolutely on paper would look like, oh, he absolutely smacked Alperin Shangun. But if you watch the game for what it was, mm-hmm. Alperin Shangun stayed the course with uh, one Nikola Jokic. Like just watching the way that he played, he stayed in the flow. He knew what it was. Like he was like, I even in the interview today, he uh, the post game interview, he said, I knew what this was gonna be. I knew that you know th- it was gonna be. Probably the toughest matchup I was going to have, like, throughout the year. He grew up idolizing. Or not grew up idolizing, but, like, at least when he was younger. Like, he idolized uh, Nikola Jokic when he was still playing in Turkey. Uh, shout out to our Turkey listeners. And, as well, he comes in now, and now he gets to play against the premier center of the NBA. Uh, overall, what were your thoughts of the Alperin Shangun versus Nikola Jokic matchup? Not as far off as you would think, uh, according to the stat line, at least in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I didn't think it was as far off as people thought. Um, it, you know, it, it, if, if you're going to go scoreboard watching, then absolutely a Jokic dominated because he did certainly dominate this game. But LP did not give up. He did not give in. The defense would suggest that, yeah, you know, he scored 36 points. Shot 30, he shot 13 of 26 from the field. That's 50%. You know what? LP shot 9 of 18 for 50%. So in terms of percentages, they were equal against each other. Uh, obviously, in terms of bulk, Jokic obviously had to carry this offense with Jamal Murray out for this game. Uh, you know, Porter Jr. had 25 and Aaron Gordon had 16, but Jokic really had to make his mark. And even then, with that stat line, the Rockets still won. A, that says a lot about the Rockets as a team. It says a lot about what this team does with their defense. Like, that final possession, one of the final possessions where Jay Sean Tate... Had to get that seal on the inbound pass. Mm -hmm. Next fucking level. But let me just tell you how impressive just this whole team was, man. Kudos to LP, man. He held his own against Jokic. Mm -hmm. That's what matters. That's what was needed. Yeah, I agree. His defense isn't always going to be the best, but he put in the effort. And that's all we can, that's all we care about is the effort. The effort was there. He played so well today. You can never be more proud. You know, as a Rocket fan for the way that this team played tonight. But, man, I am just <sighs> elated. Well, I just got to say, I am so happy. Uh, according to the shirt I'm wearing right now. Alperin he is Shingun. so happy. I am so happy. Uh, uh-huh. Alperin Shingun, this matchup that he had with Nikola Jokic. Look, I mean, Nikola Jokic, we knew he was going to get his. I'm not worried about Nikola Jokic getting his. Mm. One of my keys was out of the gate uh, from the preview was Nikola Jokic is going to get his. I'm not worried about that. Yeah. And and Shangun accepted that. Like, I, you can only do so much to stop a Nikola Jokic. Alperin Shangun, now in game nine, is still the most consistent player on the team on the offense and defense of 
side of the floor. Alperin Shengun, a product and model of consistency, able to stay engaged in the game despite the fact that he knows he's looking across. Like that's it. He's you're not looking. At, he's looking across at the best center in the NBA, mm-hmm. the defending champions. Yep. Stared him eye to eye and went toe to toe. Shout outs to you know Adonis Creed or shouts to Rocky Balboa versus Apollo Creed. You go get yep. the champ. Exactly. You go get the champ. You best not miss. Alperin Shangun did not miss. Mm-hmm. Like that's the thing. He went toe to toe with him. He went toe to toe. And when and let's look at it this way. When it mattered, Nikola Jokic hit a big three with like under thirty seconds left. Yep. What else did Nikola Jokic really do in the fourth? He didn't do much else. That's the thing. Alperin Shingun did a really good job. When the clamps were needed, Alperin Shingun actually made it a point that he was going to lock him down. He freaking locked him down and basically proved to the world that he's more than just a one-dimensional player. He's not, after tonight, I truly believe he is not just an offensive player. You can look at the stat line, 36, 20 rebounds. Okay, that's cool. But look, watch the footage down the stretch in the fourth quarter if you have the whole game. Mm-hmm. Alperin Shingun locked down Nikola Jokic. Yeah. He didn't score much. Mm-hmm. 16 in the end of the quarter, 20, uh, there was like 26 at the half. Like yeah. he only scored like what 10 or 12 points in the rest of the, the rest of the the rest of the second half. So really in actuality, in clutch minutes, Shingun outclutched at least to a degree a Nikola Jokic, getting the rebounds, getting the, you know, getting the defensive stops, hitting some timely buckets as well. Yeah, absolutely. Preventing second chance points, which was one of my keys to the game. Yeah, that was so, huge. Very huge. Shout outs once again to Alperin Shingun. Mm-hmm. Uh, truly a staple. I think he may be the centerpiece of the Rockets. Still remains uh, to be seen. Centerpiece as the, the center. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, He's my gosh. A piece of the pie at center. Centerpiece. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Well, I, Very I, correct. I, yeah, we'll talk about it. <laughs> He's like, that's debatable. <laughs> All right, GM, let's talk about, obviously, the totality of the game now. Because I, yeah. I love talking about Operation Shingun versus Nikola Jokic. What a fun matchup. And they got they got a couple more matchups coming up. Actually, two more matches in November this month, I think. I think we have yes. two more games in November. So yes. you're going to get a whole it's lot of content. It's going to be tournament games. Tournament games, oh, I believe. Oh, it's going to be a yeah. lot of fun. I can't wait. That's yeah. gonna be, it's going to be nitty gritty. So I'm excited about that. But let's move on and let's talk about uh, the Houston Rockets versus the Denver Nuggets as a whole. Mm -hmm. Uh, The totality of the game, Houston Rockets defeat the Denver Nuggets 107 to 104. Uh, there was just obviously there were a lot of good points. Like I said, Alperin Shangun was one of them. Uh, Fred Van Vliet, let your nuts hang. Oh, uh, always. Van Vliet, 26 points, two rebounds, Mm -hmm. four assists, nine of 21 from the field. But like getting on the outside of stats. This team, man. This team is something else. I tweeted earlier and I said, I have never been, I might not be more in love with an NBA, like with a Rockets team, maybe outside of the 2018 Rockets, which was, you know, a legendary team by all standards. Yeah. But I've never been more in love with a team. The the ferocity that they play, the clutch, the clutch gene that they now, that they're now literally starting to mm-hmm. wear like a badge yeah. of honor. Yeah. The ability to stay within the pace of the game. They were down 10 plus, like, between seven to ten for like a most part of the game, but the ability to not let that last year's team it would build to thirty. Yep. The game would be over. This uh-huh. team stayed within the constant of the game. GM, your overall thoughts: Rockets versus Nuggets. Uh, first of all, I just want to give a shout out to vet to the vets. You know, Fred, Dylan, and of course Uncle Jeff Green. It just it feels like these older these older guys have hit the fountain of youth. Uh, they've been injected. <laughs> with a certain type of youthful energy because they're surrounded by young gentlemen. And these guys, especially the core young guys. I like the way you said young gentlemen. The, <laughs> it's so proper. The, the core Sorry. young gentlemen of, of the Houston Rockets. Yes. Young they, have this en- young they have this enthusiasm in their game that I feel like that is infectious in a way for the veteran players. Jeff Green. I agree. His career revitalized uh he did play for denver last year but i believe he was injured for a part of the season yeah but you know pretty much like a like a player coach no you couldn't play big minutes you couldn't have told anyone that when we signed jeff green that jeff green will be closing big games to start the year to start the year start the year i knew he at Uh, some point during the season he would the guy had 15 points he shot five of seven from the field and two of four from three he hit big free throws down the stretch uh there's a reason why that he was on the floor and he is a leader of men. And when those three dudes are on the floor together with Al P and Jalen, I feel like it's like lights out for all the other teams. Like when those guys are together, it's, I don't even know what to think, man. It's a sight to see. 
everybody knows their role in the defense lock down like the old usos oh, lock, lock down. down denver nuggets lock, lock down sacramento kings lock down los angeles lakers lock down who else did we beat oh uh, uh, sorry charlotte hornets lock down the rest of the nba will be locked down hey bam <laughs> but i'm telling yeah. you man just like just the way that these guys have played it's it's just a complete turnaround. And, you know, we got to give kudos to two guys, Ime Yadoka and Ben Sullivan. Ime Yadoka, a cultivator of culture. And the culture that he has bred currently with this team is made of defense, defense, and defense. And these guys play for him. And shout out to Ben Sullivan. The shooting. Yeah. The three-point the shooting, shooting. Dude. Two huge threes yeah, in the fourth I'm, I'm, from Tari I'm Eason. Yeah, I'm about to pull the Tari Eason, too. two huge corner threes, reminiscent of a P.J. Tucker. All right? Yeah, so they shot 10 of 32 from three. So only 31%, but I, I have a gut feeling that like seven or six— Oh, no, no, sorry, that three or four out of the ten threes were in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Like, clutch— buckets like this is the type like the totality it's just to you know give a, a quick on the review side the way that this game had played out and we knew denver was going to lead most of the game like that's the thing like coming into this game you kind of have to win the battle of attrition with denver they run mm. like a machine yeah. like it really is it's an established machine they're the nba champions feed it to nikola Jokic. you knew that you were going to have michael porter jr and all these other guys that were going to do work as well um gillespie who's who's been really good for them but to stay within the compounds of the game and not let it deter you when you have someone like Fred Van Vliet, mm -hmm. when you have someone like a Dylan Brooks, when you have Jeff Green down the stretch, when you have Jay Sean Tate, who is a proven, put your hard hat on and I'll go to work. Yeah. You know, and getting Alperin Shangun and Jalen Green to buy into this new found culture and system is it's it's a perfect storm. It's lightning in a bottle that you that the world did not expect. Like yeah, the world did not expect the Rockets to be six and three in the first nine games. And just to, for a comparison, the first nine games last year, we were one and eight. The past two years, we were one and eight. Mm -hmm. So this is completely unheard of. And down the stretch, the big buckets by Jeff Green in the two corners, like you had stated earlier, obviously a big deal. The Jay Sean Tate steal to help seal the game when it was a two or was a three point lead. Mm -hmm. So that was absolutely huge it was it was time because you knew that the lead was about nine or ten for the rockets like from i think five minutes to about two under minutes. two minutes yeah right but we knew denver was going to start like they, they were going to go there was going to be one last burst of a run because that's what champions do champions will not take it on the chin they will fight back and they they wanted this like you could see that they wanted to win so they did everything that they could to do that however um, the Rockets, this is a different breed of animal now. So mm -hmm. this team and their ability to stay within the confines of themselves, not to go too far outside of what makes them successful, but to trust each other, trust the culture, trust Fred Van Vliet, yeah. trust, uh, your, you know, like I said, your point guard, trust mm -hmm. your teammates, yeah. and ultimately will yourself mm -hmm. to a win against the defending champs. I mean, shout outs, like you said, uh, shout outs to... Uh, everyone as well uh, that that played well obviously uh, Jay Sean Tate which played huge minutes yeah um, Jeff Green we're gonna go into the next segment mm -hmm. but Dylan Brooks just a model of consistency the closeouts on Michael Porter Jr. on Aaron Gordon down the stretch were huge yeah like that the thing I knew Dylan Brooks was gonna regress like I was like okay he's gonna regress in terms of shooting yeah absolutely. he's gonna regress shooting wise he was gonna regress no way 60% yeah. from the yeah. from 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 three no way that's yeah. not gonna hold yeah. but he did still shoot three of six mm -hmm. one of three from three which is about normal three of four from the free throw line yeah you know he's he was a minus nine everyone was actually a minus except for J uh for J uh sorry jalen green who was let, a plus 10 let me yeah that's what yeah, i wanted because i'm glad that you mentioned jalen yes. green go ahead because please. i wanted to give a shout out to jalen green the man did not the stats shoot doesn't well look like much. at all my man explain it my though. man shot one of 13 from the field one of four from three let me tell you two things two things that were huge for me actually three things i'm gonna say three okay all right okay, I'm in the box score one Six of six from the free throw line, huge. The so guy got, was not the hitting. Of the he was not hitting good, shots. Good free throw shooting at game. all. The only shot that he hit was a three tonight. That was it. Two. Wow. Five assists, despite not uh, being able to make any bucket tonight. He still was passing the ball. He was tied for the team lead in assists with Al P. It says a lot about Jalen Green and his character. The fact that 100%. he struggled to shoot throughout the whole night. But he still brought it. 
and three. Like Kenny stated earlier, he was a plus 10 on the floor. When Jalen was on the floor, he made a positive impact for this team. And that's what we need. And granted, 100%. you know, we expect, you know, Jalen Green to light up the box score in terms of scoring. But what I have noticed recently is he's filling up the box scores in other ways. And that those five assists, I'm telling you right now, huge. Well, can I, Very yeah. huge. Well, I wanted to add on too as well to that, mm-hmm. that this is actually the first game of the season, the first win of the season where Jalen Green affected the game outside of scoring because yep. the games that he we've won he's you know he scored like 20 plus um yeah. stat line on the other side yeah a couple mm-hmm. of rebounds here a couple assists here but this was the first real game where the offense was like he wasn't going to get a lot of shots up the defense i mean denver's uh perimeter defense is always top notch the fact that he was able to make a, a difference the other way the eight rebounds are so key to me the ability to box out sneak in and get those rebounds huge five assists is insane that is something to look forward to down the road yep. jalen green as a playmaker is not as needed as it was last year or two years ago mm-hmm. so you're not going to see the assists go you're not going to see the assists go I get not go up, but like you're not going to see him handle the ball as often and like be a playmaker because that's not his role anymore. We have enough playmakers now. However, his ability to, you know, stay within, like I said earlier, stay within the confines of the game and make impacts in other ways. And his defense. I also want to give a shout out to his defense because he mm-hmm. was able, he was locking down. They gave up 104 points. Jalen was on the floor in the final five minutes. Yep. Those were key. Yep. Those were key plays. Now, he missed a couple of assignments, which is normal, and that's okay. It's nothing big. I mean, there were made a couple of threes down the stretch that I think uh, Jalen Green could have rotated and maybe just didn't get back quick enough, but that's okay, and that's going to come with time. But the overall totality of the game, mm-hmm. great defense, and Absolutely. I think that he earned the right to close that game. So the Houston Rockets, once again, like 107-104. Mm-hmm. Well, I loved it. Um, shout out to Jay Sean Tate once again. And just put on your put on your huge put on your hard hat one time. Play. Biggest defensive play, maybe biggest defensive play of the year so far. Yeah. Um so far. Many left to go. Yeah. Um it's a signature moment. Right. Absolutely. Right. Jalen yeah. Green, what like I said, Jalen Green earned his right to finish the game. And it's funny mm-hmm. that I do say that because it's gonna move on perfectly to our next segment. Uncle Jeff Green closed the game yep. over Jabari Smith. So Jalen Green earned his minutes to close. Jabari Smith did not earn the minutes to close. Yeah. Jeff Green now, second game in a row where Jeff Green has closed the game as the, as the power forward over Jabari Smith Jr. I have my thoughts. I know everyone's curious because I am the Jabari guy on the show. Let's hear it. But no, no. I want to give you your I want you to I want you to go first. I'll go next. Mm-hmm. I I'll I know that people want to know what I think, but <coughs> I want I'm curious to see what you think right out of the gate in, in terms of Jeff Green closing over Jabari Smith for the second game in a row. Um, I'm not too worried about it uh, in the grand scheme of things when it comes to the macro lens of the whole totality of the season. I think we're going to see Jabari Smith out there. But when you're talking about right now, it's a little worrisome. Uh, Body language is not good. He looks a little lost. Uh, Like we stated, uh, me and the commission talked about things in private during the game where I told him, like, is there something wrong with Jabari? Like, I don't know. Uh, Let me tell you, as a human being, it's hard to even do a normal job when there are things going on in your personal life. I don't know. I'm just speculating, purely speculating here. But with with all of that being said, like I'm not so sure. Like there could be something wrong. But uh, personally, but with his play, Jabari just isn't all there. He's a little psyched out. Uh, I think that there's time for him to turn it around. But the body language is not good. But it's okay. It's all a part of the process. We've all been there. And Jabari, the team is successful, which is what matters. But I'm hoping that Jabari takes these times where he gets to see Jeff Green close and learn from Jeff Green. Because I feel like what Jabari could possibly do is become like, you know, more lengthier, better version of what Jeff Green ever was in terms of I mean, affecting he has the, the skill ball level game. too. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, it's Jeff there. Jeff the Green, raw tools are there. Exactly. Jeff Green is essentially what what John Sally's character is on Oh Eddie, wow. Wow. Know? That's that's a reach. Yeah. First of all, there. that's a well, that's a big reach, first of all, because John Sally's character was a legend, so I don't know. Yeah. But I mean, that, and I love also, Jabari. He was better than Stacy Patton. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. <laughs> but, no, wow, that's wild. Okay. Deep. Yeah. Now we're now now it's a deep cut. Yeah, you yeah. just said Stacy Patton. That's a deep cut. Yeah. No, for him at least. Well, we, we'll devote a whole episode but at yes, some point yes, to Stacey yes, Patton. Yes, yes. But anyways, yeah, that's pretty much all I gotta say in regards to that. It's okay. Jeff Green's closing games, we're winning games. That is what matters. 
Right, big time here. And in terms of what I think, because I'm I'm a huge Jabari fan, uh, critical last the last episode uh, because I didn't feel like he did in the minutes uh, yeah. based on what we saw throughout the game itself. And tonight, similar thing. There, there. The thing is with Jabari. He had 8.7 rebounds. He shot 4 of 7, which is actually a good percentage. But he shot 0 of 2 from 3. He got two looks from 3, and he missed them both. Mm-hmm. So, this is that that is not what removes him from the floor. Mm-hmm. That's not what's going to remove him from the floor. Obviously, shot making, is that's obviously a big part of it. Two things here. These are my keys. Staying engaged in the game and not missing defensive assignments. Actually, three. Uh, not missing mm-hmm. defensive <laughs> assignments and being able to stay in front of your... The person that you're defending. Yeah. Jabari has not been, uh, you know, he's not passed all three with flying colors, unfortunately. I don't know what it, what's going on with the lateral movement because Jabari, coming out of Auburn and what he was doing uh, for the first year last year, able to stay in front, like he was able to, he got beat a couple times, but for the most part, like you he think was his engaged. defense has regressed a little bit? I think bit. so. I think, and I don't yeah. know what the reasoning is behind that. However, and I'm not going to speculate behind it. I, the fact of the matter is I can only tell you what's happening on the floor as it happens. Yeah. Because I watched all 82 games last year. I saw Jabari up close last year. Mm-hmm. He, it's, it's different. It's different last year than this year. I can guarantee you that right out of the gate. Yeah. The defense, he, it's a hair shorter. And I think what my, if I were to give one reason, the defensive scheme did change. I think that plays into part of what Jabari is doing. Jabari, is, he's very much a system player. And he was so used to playing a certain way under Silas and Auburn. Yeah. And I feel like uh, Ime Udoka's defense kind of flipped this script on its head. And I think that Jabari's still getting used to it. That's what I think. Yeah, there's but, definitely an adjustment so, period yeah, for some Yeah, and that's of the guys. why I think people are saying, oh, why is he getting beat off the dribble, blah, 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 and why is this happening? I think he's thinking I think he's thinking too much. I think if he just goes back to Jabari Ball, his instincts, because his instincts is what got him here. Yep. He's one of the best lengthy, uh, coming out of college, he was one of the best lengthy defenders in college at the time. <coughs> and, coming into, and coming into the NBA, he was highly touted as one of the best defensive players in the 2022 draft. I truly <laughs> believe um, we're going to see before we know it a, a play. 10 or 15 games down the road where he's going to lock back in. I'm not worried about his defense. Mm-hmm. I'm not worried the fact that Uncle Jeff Green closed. Tonight, he earned it. The past two games, he earned it. Mm-hmm. And I think when these nipping tuck games happen, when they get really um, squeezed and and when you're playing against the defending champs, like, for instance, like tonight, obviously, or when you're playing an in-season tournament game with a chance to hold and hoist an NBA Cup, those are, you know, hold on to your butts games. And if you're not playing well, the best player will play, unfortunately. Yeah. So I think that's the direction in which they're going to go. If Jeff Green's playing well and he's playing within the system flow of the game because he's a vet, he's a you know he's an eighteen year, seventeen year, oh no, sorry, like a fifteen year vet. So he's been he's been in so many systems. He knows the game. He's smart enough now. Jabari's only in his second year. Not worried about it. Ten mm-hmm. or fifteen games down the road, I really feel like the lateral quickness is going to be just fine. Lateral defense is going to be fine. The adjustments is going to be fine. Mm-hmm. And we're going to be talking about ten or fifteen games from now about Jabari once again being once one of the best defenders in the NBA. Like that's that's where we'll be at at about. Yeah, like I said, 15 games, so I'm not worried about it. But Jeff Green did close. He earned the close, um, and and ultimately it led to the most important part, which is a W. Yeah. Rockets beat the Denver Nuggets. So mm-hmm. that I'm totally fine with. In the long run, not fine with it. I want Jabari <laughs> to still close. Yep. So, GM, let's go into our last segment, obviously. you know The most highly anticipated segment that we've brought on from the Astros all the way over to the Rockets, and we are talking about our D-A-W-G. Dog of the week one time. And I'm curious, even though we're going to give our dogs of the week, I want to know who your dog of the week is. Drop your comment down. Mm-hmm. Who's, the do- who's the dog of the week so far? We know what dog of the week, D-A-W-G means. That's our MVP of the week. That's mm-hmm. for just a street slang for all, yep. the, for all, for all my street slang folk. So <laughs> dog of the week, uh, basically who's the MVP of the week for you? Go ahead and drop the comments down below. It could be Opera and Shangoon. Uh, give me a reason why it could be a Jalen Green. Give me a reason why it could be Dylan Brooks, Fred Van Vliet. I would love to hear your comments. Drop it down below. GM, who's the dog of the week? Who, in your opinion, is the dog of the week? Fred Van Vliet. He's mine. Fred? Absolutely, he's Fred. Uh, the way that he has uh, led this team in terms of leadership, hitting big shots, making great passes all along the way, uh, Fred Van Vliet's it, man. I mean, yeah. we all saw that game winner. Uh, was it from earlier, from last week? And it's just carried over. The man is very confident. He's brought so much swagger to this team, and I feel like it's super important uh with what he's been doing, despite the efficiency. But that comes with the territory. That's exactly how it's going to be. He might not shoot the best, 
but he's going to hit big shots and he's going to do big things for the team whether it comes from shooting uh passing defense he is that guy he is our vet he is our leader he is him. That's my point guard. <laughs> okay, so that's your dog of the week. That's my dog. Okay, of the dog week. of the week for you is Fred Van Vliet. For me, I want to, for the first time on Summit history, I want to share it. I want to give a co MVP. So you it's do. not Dylan Brooks. Dylan Brooks has finally gotten. He's he got the first two weeks in a row, mm-hmm. and he was the defending champ. Knocked off now. Mm-hmm. So not the defending champ. Yeah. I'm gonna give co 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 dog of the week awards. One Fred Van Vliet for every reason, like you'd stated, mm-hmm. clutch minutes, clutch moments. Huge shot against the Pelicans Mm -hmm. and clutch shooting and timely uh, defense and just having that overall dog in him um, Mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. Yeah, Dog of the week belongs to Fran Van Vliet. I think Alperin Shingoon is the co. Mm -hmm. There's no reason as to why when I've stated that he's been the most consistent player on the floor that we have to share some love with Alperin Shingoon. Mm -hmm. Anchoring the defense on the back end while still putting up the same numbers, even better numbers this year than last year. And actually, like, making impact on it, like, actually making a level impact in terms of winning, which was my only holdup going into the season with mm-hmm. him being the starter. Yeah. More than proven. Six and three. Fred Van Vliet, Shangun. Do, are, do you, are you in agreement with me? Can we give him co? We'll we, give him co. We'll That's give him co dogs. We'll let, we'll let the, we'll let the uh, comments and other people. Yeah. You know, our, our, our fans decide we're gonna give yeah we're gonna give our we're gonna give our co our co-dogs of the week i guess so we think fred van vliet and operating shangun but i want y'all what do y'all think yeah drop your comment below let us know who the dog of the week is if you think Mm -hmm. it's uh yeah if you think it's any of those two great if you think it's dylan brooks still give me reason why dylan brooks should be the three-time defending champ yeah fair (laughs) so i'd love to hear what (laughs) y'all have to say well gm you know what let's go ahead and close this episode i would love to do a uh, a preview, obviously, for the next in-season tournament game against the Clippers. James Harden's coming into town, but mm-hmm. we're not going to do that tonight. You're going to have to stay tuned. That's going to be next episode. Let's go ahead and close this episode here. But I do, before close, before closing this episode, I do want to give a shout-out to Big City Wings. Big Apollo's City Wings. Wings. Apollo's Wing Joint, Houston's Wing Joint. Uh, they got two for Tuesdays. Buy one, get one. In bone, boneless, whichever your preference is. They have a buy one, get one free for you. And that's only available on Tuesdays all day. Thanksgiving special one time. They do do catering. So if you want to sub out your turkey for your chicken, you have the option to do that. Once again, uh, Big City Wings. Go visit the one nearest near you with 13 plus locations uh, and growing as well. Uh, Houston's Wing Joint, Apollo's Wing Joint one time. GM, let's close the show. Give them one time for the people as a producer gives us a go on cue. Give the people what they want. All right. Well, make sure to follow me on Twitter at JP underscore Marabueno. Follow the follow the podcast on Twitter and TikTok at Summit, S-O-M-P-O-D. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at Summit State of Mind underscore P-O-D. Follow our people, our team, our brothers at Apollo NBA and at Apollo H-O-U. And everyone, be sure to super kick that subscribe button on YouTube.com slash Apollo H-O-U. We'll catch all of your favorite uh, videos from the Summit, your boys from the Texans, and uh, the Astros content and everything else you want to see in the sports world of Houston. You can also follow me as well on Twitter at Summit Commission. Shoutouts to the Apollo Podcast brethren. Shoutouts to BTD Beyond the Diamond Crown Jewel of Houston Astros Podcast. Shoutouts to Apollo Texans and Off the Gridiron. They're going to have a great episode coming up with CJ Stroud. My goodness. And once again, we thank y'all for making us your first listen for all Houston Rockets content right now. 185 officially in the books. Let's end this episode as I end every episode with a go Apollo, go Summit, and a one, two, three, four, five, six, go Rockets. Oh, by the way, watch basketball. Yeet! Yeet!